in this problem, what I would like to do is now look at a system that has four different forces and use 2D rectangular components to determine what the resultant of these four forces are and the angle that these four forces make with the X axis. And the procedure we are going to use is the exact same procedure that we used for two forces, for three forces. And this could be extended if we had five, if we had 10, if we had 20 different forces, we could use the procedure that's on the left and just follow it. And we would get what our resultant is and we could figure out what angle uh, it made with, the, with any axis that we wanted. Now, let's, let's start at step one. So step one, I have choose a positive X and positive Y direction. Now, I'm just going to write this out, but I'm going to choose up to be my positive Y. And I'm going to choose to the right to be my positive X. And this is going to become important when we're putting these components together. So for the X direction, this means any component that's pointing along this X direction to the right is going to be added. Any component that's pointed in the towards the left needs to be subtracted. For the Y direction, any component that's pointing up is going to be added. Any component that's pointing downward is going to be subtracted. So let's Let's go to step two. Step two, resolve all vectors along the X and the Y directions. Okay, now before you start writing, just look at what these vectors are. F3 and F4 are already in this X direction. They have no Y components to that vector, so they're actually easy. F1 and F2 are in this, F, this XY plane right here. And so since they're in this XY plane, both of these, they're both going to have a x and y component or a i and j component so let's look at f1 let's decompose it so it only has so we take this 10 kilonewtons that's on this angle of this similar triangle of three four five and we make it so its components are in the x direction and the y direction so for f1 how do we do this well we take the magnitude we take this 10 kilonewtons right here so we take 10 and we have to look at which way these arrows are pointing. So if we start on the tail right here, to go from this point right here to the head, we need to go in this to, towards the right like that, and we need to go down like this. So that means this, this arrow is going to be F1X. And F1X, my force one in the X direction, is going to be positive. It's going to be positive because it points to the right. And how do we actually get that? Well, with a three, four, five triangle, we're gonna take the magnitude of 10 and we're going to look at what number is in this horizontal direction. And that turns out to be this four. So we're gonna multiply the 10 by four divided by whatever the hypotenuse is, whatever that, uh, ang uh, whatever that number is, and that's a five. So we're gonna have 10 times four over five, and that's in the positive I direction because it points to the right. We're gonna do the same thing for this, which would be my F1Y. And for F1Y, well, this is now pointing downward. Because it's pointing downward, it's against my positive direction, so I have to subtract it. So I need to subtract 10. Again, we take the magnitude, and then we look at which, which of these numbers is in the vertical direction. So we're gonna multiply this by three over five, and that's in my J direction. And I'm just gonna keep my units on this, so this, this is a kilonewton. So that's F1. Let's take a look at F2. For F2, well, this is also in the XY plane, but we're told a different way, right? We're told that it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. So if we try to break it up into components again, we're gonna have to go this way. To go from this point to this point, our tail to our head, we're gonna have to go towards the right, and then we're gonna have to go up. 
and those points are going to be touching each other. So this right here is gonna be my F2X. This one right here is going to be my force two in the Y direction. Okay, nothing new so far. But now instead of having this nice similar triangle where we can multiply the magnitude by a four, four fifths or a three fifths, we have this angle. And that means we can use Sakatoa because we have this right triangle right here. So if you remember Sakatoa, great. If you don't remember Sakatoa, write it out. And then to know what you need to use, which, which one of these you need to use, we have to look at the angle that we're looking at. So here, I'm going to use this 60 degrees right here. When I use this 60 degrees, this F2 is my hypotenuse. And I want to know what this F2Y is. Well, this F2Y is my opposite angle. So that needs the sign. So this will be what I use for F2Y. And then this is my adjacent side. So my adjacent side needs the cosine. So this will be my F2X. Now I can the cosine is uh, the angle that I'm using is 60. The hypotenuse is the the full 13 kilonewtons. So if I I'll just do it for the cosine. So I have the cosine of some angle is equal to my adjacent over my hypotenuse. That means I'm looking for what this adjacent is. So my adjacent uh, is equal to my hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So my adjacent I'm looking for, that's gonna be this value right here. It's gonna be the hypotenuse, F2. So 13 times the cosine of 60 I, and it's positive because it's pointing to the right. Now let's look at F2Y. Well, this is positive because it's pointing up, right? We're going from uh, this position upward. So we're going to have plus 13 times the sine of 60 J. And again, these are all kilonewtons. Now, F3 and F4 are easy, right? F3 and F4 are just in already in the X direction. So F3 is going to be equal to 7i kilonewtons. And F3 is pointing to the left, so it needs to be a minus, right? It's pointing in the opposite direction of this positive. And then F4, F4 is also just in the horizontal direction. So F4 is going to be 4i kilonewtons, and it's positive because it's pointing to the right. So now that we've broken down, we've done step two, we resolved all our vectors along the x and the y directions, we want to combine all of our light components. So we're going to combine all our i components. We're going to combine all our j components. And I'm just going to write that right here. So F R is going to be equal to, I'm going to get all my I components together. So actually, let me determine what these numbers actually are. So I have 10 times four fifths. So that's going to be eight. I'm going to have 10 times three fifths. That's going to be six. So this is equal to 8i minus 6j kilonewtons. For F2, this is going to be 13 times the cosine of 60. And 13 times the sine of 60. So I'm gonna have 6.5i plus 11.3j. Again, this is kilonewtons. So now when I do this resultant force, I just have actual numbers I can use. I'm going to have eight plus 6.5 minus seven plus four, 
That's just all of these numbers right here. And this is gonna be my I component. And I've combined all these terms. Then I'm gonna take my uh, J component. So I'm gonna take a minus six plus 11.3. That's my J component. That's my kilonewtons. Let's add these up. So eight plus 6.5 minus seven plus four, 11.5 minus six plus 11, 11.3, 5.3. So my resultant force is equal to 11.5 I plus 5.3 J. And this is again in kilonewtons. Well, this is, this is depending on what you're asked. You might be asked to give it to, uh, to find this and uh, report this in our Cartesian vector form. And this is what you would have, but you might also be asked to figure out the magnitude and the angle. So if I wanted to figure out the magnitude the magnitude of FR is going to be equal to the square root of my I term. So 11.5 squared plus 5.3 squared. So both of these terms squared and take the square root. And that number is... Twelve point twelve point seven, and this is kilonewtons. And what angle does this make with the horizontal? To figure out the angle, okay, what we want to do is we want to take both of these components, and the first thing we want to do is draw our x component. So if we start at, if we say this is, if we say this is my x and my y and I start at zero. Let me dash these just so I don't get confused or confuse anyone. The first thing I wanna do is draw my X component and my X component is 11.5. So 11.5 in this direction. We know it's pointing in that direction because it's positive. And then I draw on this 5.3. This 5.3 goes up it's also positive. Then I draw the uh, resultant. So this, if, if we uh, did this out, this would be that 12.7. But we wanna figure out what this angle right in there is. That angle is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. And you can get that from this part of Sakatoa. So we have 5.3 divided by 11.5. So the inverse tangent of 5.3 divided by 11.5 is equal to 24.7 degrees. So another way, instead of writing 11.5 I plus 5.3 J, if you were asked to figure out the magnitude and the angle, this would be equal to 12.7 kilonewtons uh, uh, at 24.7 degrees up from the horizontal axis. So this, this really just shows you how easy the this step-by-step -step procedure for using these 2d rectangular components is because it can generalize to as many forces as you need